What is good, all of our listeners and viewers? Welcome to another episode of Games and Groceries. My name is Adam. And I'm Liz. And we have a new camera angle. Hello, everybody. Woohoo! We are here with episode 94. We're talking about how video games help distract us from all things happening in the world. But first, we've got some segments for you that we do. We've got some segments. Liz, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I mean, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> um, I made a cake. Yeah? I baked my first. I've made dairy-free cakes and desserts before, but this is my first, like, birthday cake right. that I made dairy-free. It didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, but it still tasted good. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. Um, hey, buddy. And I'm not working from home 100% yet. As far as I know at the moment, I will be working in the office three days a week and working from home two days a week. Would you quit playing with the dog? No, I'm trying to talk. No, I'm sorry. He's, he's trying to get in my lap and I'm trying to like say you can do it. But he can't do it. Yeah. I believed in him though. Jeez. Oh, um, I, I still believe in you, buddy. Keep talking. Um, but yeah, so I'm still in the office, but we're not sure where we're going to be because we don't know where we fall in the, um, Pennsylvania business mm -hmm. lockdown. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll find out Monday what I'm doing. Um, but this whole living day to day thing is, is not working for me. Yeah, no, it's like, it's one thing if we were like stuck mm -hmm. in our house, like if we were like, all right, we're, we're not working. We're home. Right. I'd be fine. Like, I'd be like, all right, fine. I don't know when I'm going back to work, but at least I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm hmm. I don't like not knowing what's happening day to day. It's try like it's driving me like I, I want to either know am I staying home or am I going to work? Yeah, it's it's a tough time for all of America. I know yeah. California is on a like stay at home lockdown. Shelter uh, in place. Yeah, shelter in place kind of uh thing. It's a scary time right mm -hmm. now. Uh you know, it, it doesn't matter where you live in the world, it's it's a scary time. Yeah. But I mean, we're here, and that's the we thing. We are here. That's the thing. Like, we are committed to... Oops, excuse me. Uh, we are here committed to give you entertainment just to distract us a little bit. Uh, and I just love how, you know, creators are still coming together and still providing content. They're not, like, you know, backing away from that. And mm -hmm. that's what we're here doing. Um, everybody who listens to the Game of Groceries podcast. And we have a new uh, video coming out this Saturday, so uh, we're still full steam ahead on, on that front. Uh, but yeah, we just want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And, you know, just, just a little message. Social distancing. It, it doesn't mean complete isolation. However, mm -hmm. however, uh, it does mean limited social interaction. I don't think it's that hard to do. No. But, you know, it is what it is. That's all I'll say from that. But, um... Yeah, there, there's just a lot of uh, confusion of what that means. and yeah. um, Like, you can still see family and stuff, but, like, try not to have, like, a whole family reunion. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, why is everybody going to the beach? I don't I don't understand. Like, I understand the attraction of the beach. Like, I love the beach. My mm -hmm. dream is to live on the beach. Yeah. But. <laughs> but at the same time, it's I just. I don't need to go on the beach where there's a ton of people right mm -hmm. now. It's just not necessary. No, it's, um. You know, a lot's going on. There's a lot of confusion. There's not a lot of information going around. And it's it's scary times right now. It is. It's it's one for the history books. I actually told Adam that um, this upcoming week we're going to take home videos each day mm -hmm. um, so that we have it as, like, we live through this. And so, like, our kids and grandkids and all can, like, look at these and be like, wow. Yeah. What was going on back then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's just get on with the show, I yeah, think. Yeah, let's stop being so depressing, Adam. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. So we want to remind everybody that we're on social media. That's right. We're on social media. That's right, everybody. We're on social media. Uh, you can find <laughs> us on Twitter, at Gaming Groceries, or you can find us individually. I'm at Ace the Grocer. And I'm at Journey First. You can also follow us on Instagram, Games and Groceries, all one word, where I try to do as much daily content as I can possibly do. I'm just one man. Get off my back. I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can see some fun memes there, behind the scenes photos, um, uh, in, including a question where we have these discussions on the podcast. And we'd like to ask you on social media, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, as well as Facebook. Find us on that toxic wasteland that is called Facebook. Uh, we are on there. That is 
Facebook. And uh, we also have a website, gamesandgroceries.com, where you can listen to all of the podcasts from the website, as well as find out where you can listen to the audio versions of the website, as well as some articles I've written in the past. Check out gamesandgroceries.com. And if you haven't yet, and you watch this on YouTube, first of all, hello, my name is Adam. And I'm Liz. Hi. But if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely hit that subscribe button, because uh, I see you, uh, half of you who watch our videos, you're not subscribed. Why is that? Why that? Uh, and I hope that while you watch our videos, both the podcast and the video essays we do every other Saturday, uh, we hope to improve it uh, like we're doing right now. Uh, we're hoping to improve it every single step so that when you do subscribe, you're subscribing to a channel that's constantly improving and that will deliver you content that's actually worth watching. Uh, and here we are with a new camera angle. Uh, this is actually being shot with the... Um, with the camera that we used for the Let's Plays. And I was like, oh, we're wasting a camera. Well, why don't we do and this? It's a good camera. It's like got good clarity. Yeah, it's got pretty good. Uh, so, you know, different camera angle every now and again. Yeah. Uh, and if you haven't yet, definitely leave us a review on Podchaser. I will leave that in the description down below. Go to the link in Podchaser. Definitely give us a uh, honest rating, an honest, uh, an honest five-star rating, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever stars you want to give us. Uh, but definitely leave us that uh, review on Podchaser if you haven't already. So, with all that out of the window, let's get started with our first segment... Movie Minutes. Movie Minutes is a segment that we talk about the movies that we saw in the past week, whether it be on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, not so much in theaters at this point in time, but we like to talk about them and we recommend them or we don't recommend them. So this week's Movie Minutes is a movie that you can find on Netflix called Drive. So Liz, Drive, starring Ryan Gosling. Uh, also Brian Cranston is in this movie and we were idiots and we we're just like, where have we seen this character from? Uh, Oscar Isaac is in this movie. Our Good old Paul Dameron. Poe Dameron. There you go. Did I say Paul Dameron? Yeah, you said Paul. I want to go to the North Paul Dameron. You're an idiot. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Opening thoughts. What do you think? Um, I like that Ryan Gosling was in it. Of course. Um, I like how, like... Uh, Oscar Isaac comes out and like, oh, what? Like, you, you see, you're some big man. And Ryan Gosling is giving the Ryan Gosling look. Like, he's just like, yeah, I'm pretty hot. <laughs> go, for, go for it. Um, But, I mean, I enjoyed it. But for the longest time in the movie, I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Well, yes, for my opinions. This is my opinion. Well, that's what I'm saying. Any, anything else? Um, Not really. I was pretty lost most of the movie. Yeah. Like not lost. Like I knew what was going on, but I didn't know like why. And half the time I couldn't understand what Ryan Gosling was saying mm -hmm. because they made him mumble so much. Yeah. We like, had to like, turn the movie up pretty loud. Yeah. And even then I didn't understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So it was it was different. I so, didn't hate it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that too in our ratings too. Yeah. Like why we didn't hate it. But first note I have easily Easily, easily, one of the best intros of any movie we've seen yeah, recently. Yeah, I like the intro. That the, was good. The intro was fantastic. Yeah. Like, it was so good. I, I felt like when you watch the intro of this movie, that it really set the tone for what it was going to be. And the suspense was already there. Like, mm -hmm. it already had you, it had your attention. Uh, like, and that's the thing. The hook of the movie was great. Yeah. I, I loved it. I loved uh, the camera angles. I love the music. Mm -hmm. I love the tension that they gave. Yeah. If that was the movie, mm -hmm. I'd be like, this is a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Love this. Yeah. Um. So that's my first note is that the intro was great. Uh. Anything else? Any other thoughts on that? I did really like the intro and the little fake twist they did. Mm -hmm. That was good. But I actually have a feeling that if it, they went the route that we thought they were taking. Yeah. I might have liked it more. That's the thing. Is that like... Like they use all their power in the first like 10 scenes and then they're like, meh. And that now and you know how he felt in Teen Spirit. Yeah. Teen Spirit started off strong. Drive also started out strong. Mm -hmm. And then you get to halfway through Act 2 into Act 3 and it's like, what are we doing here, fellas? Yeah. What are we doing here? Um, the other thing I have to say is that the film soundtrack is... 
it's it's my kind of music. It is. It's definitely Adam music. It's so good. It's um, uh, if I had to describe it, it's like a really pumped up version of Oxen Free and Life is Strange. Put them together, mm-hmm. uh, in like an '80s retro style kind of car driving. It's so good. Mm-hmm. I love the soundtrack in this movie. Every single music choice that they gave, mm-hmm. spot on. Uh, the sim the cinema uh, cinematography. Cinematography, <laughs> the, the the filming of this movie, mm-hmm. the set pieces, yeah. um, the body language. Mm-hmm. There were some scenes where there was no dialogue, and you know exactly. A lot of it was no dialogue. That's why I love it. Like yeah. the first two acts, like, or like an act and an act and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Through halfway through act two, this was my kind of movie. Yeah, you don't give an exposition piece. Uh, you tell a story with body language and uh, not too much dialogue, mm-hmm. and, you, and you really set the tone with 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 your movie. You don't have anybody explaining your tone. You set the tone, mm-hmm. and I felt like in the first act, it did, it did just that. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, and just just the 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 angles were shot. Uh, were were just it was on point. It yeah. was it, it was, was good. It was on its way to becoming one of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. But then you get to the end, uh, into act three. Yeah. And you're starting to question, and it's my last note. What's the message here? Yeah. You know, like, and it's not like every movie needs like a deep cut message. Yeah. But like most of this movie, I felt like I couldn't find the plot. Yeah. I didn't understand what the point of this movie was like. Uh, not every movie needs to have a message or what they wanted to relay or anything, but it's like, what was the, there needs to be a story here. What, what, what was this? What was the story? Yeah. Like we just kind of followed him around for a few months. And that's the thing is that like, um, there, there was a lot of times I was just questioning. And like I said, like what we've been mm-hmm. saying, there doesn't need to have a deep, dark message, but I feel like every movie needs to have its purpose. Yeah, and a long time, like I said, I didn't know how people were related, Mm -hmm. and even the Netflix description of this movie was like, "That's for once." The description made me want to watch a movie, but Mm -hmm. the movie failed me. Yeah, like the I don't want to give spoilers. I won't discuss. I mean, it's a pretty old movie, not old, but it's been out for 2011. Yeah, it's it's old. Yeah, um, no spoilers if you haven't seen yet, but yeah. But um But the description is just kind of like Oh, cool, this sounds decent. But then, you know, it's I don't want to say any more. I can't. Like It's it's almost it's too indie. Yeah. Like there's indie and I like the artistic styling of indie movies, but this was almost too indie where they just they didn't mm-hmm. They're just like, here's stuff. It's the other thing is it's that It's got a lot of I think the thing is they relied on too many cool stuff. Yeah. And didn't and forgot about the story. They focused on doing really cool shots. Really, really cool shots. Really artistic um, yeah. scenery. Uh, by the way, definitely not family friendly. No. Not family friendly at all. Um, you get to act three and it's like, holy crap. When like did, that uh, escalated quickly. When did Scorsese get into this uh, set piece? Holy yeah. crap. Um, no, it, it was um, it was violent, but at the same time, it was really well done. Mm-hmm. Um but that's the thing. I think if you like a movie that's beautifully done, uh, well shot, I'll say well paced. But if you want a, a story and a message of a movie to be uh, on point and matching, I think you're going to be disappointed, which is coming to our final ratings. And this was kind of like a hard one to rate. Yeah. What, what did you give it? I gave it a seven mm-hmm. when it first started, and I really had no idea what we were doing. I was going to give it like a six, six and a half. Yeah. But because of the good, the cool shots, it got a seven. But I was pretty much bored outside of those cool shots. Yeah. Like, if it weren't for those parts, I was kind of bored. Like, I didn't understand how certain people were related. And, like, until the end, till they were all related, I was like, wait a second, they all work together? Yeah. Like, I thought these were separate. Like, I was so confused and i was bored so that's yeah. why i got i gave it a seven i personally i mean depending on what your style is you might like this but it's not something i'd be like oh you have to watch this it's like watch it if you're interested but i don't i don't feel the need for anyone to watch it that's the thing is that like if you love a movie it i gave it an eight mm-hmm. i was ready you to, liked it more than i did i was ready to give it a nine maybe even a nine and a half to a ten 
But as the movie progressed and I just started to say, like, what are we learning here besides don't do crime? Yeah. Like that. That's basically the message. But if you love a movie for its cinematography, if you love a movie for the way it's shot, um, if you love, you know, the way it's directed in that sort of sense, you're going to love this movie. Yeah. But if you rely on a story and a message and dialogue, dialogue, um, where it's going, it's it's disappointing. I gave it's it. It's really hard. This one was hard to rate. Yeah, I would. I still give it an eight. I think it's a solid movie. It's a hundred minutes long. I still, I still like it. I still like it. I, I felt I, like it was too long. Yeah. But that's the thing. Is that like? But that's because I was bored. Like I said, like when you when we paused it to do stuff, something. I don't remember where we were, I think we got food or something. Mm-hmm. But when we paused it, I was like, we still have an hour. Yeah. Like, ugh. No, it's um, it started strong, and then you got to the end, and you're just like, why are we here? Yeah. Um, but I still think it's a solid movie. So take our recommendations for the way you uh, wanted to. Again, the movie is called Drive. It's on Netflix. Uh, I'd say if you're interested, give it a watch. Don't expect this story to, you know, have some sort of meaning. I don't think it's nonsensical. I think everything that happened made sense. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, how is this? What are we doing here? Yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's Drive. It it has Ryan Gosling in it. If you like that sort of thing, Ryan Gosling. If you you enjoy seeing Ryan Gosling's face on your TV screen, you're going to like it. But... That's our review of Drive. It's on Netflix. And now it's time to talk about video games. Woo-hoo. Oh, boy. It's time to talk about video games in our next segment. Top three gaming news. The top three gaming news is the gaming news that we saw in the past week. And we like to rank it three, two, one, just to give you, you know, a condensed version of what's going on in the gaming industry. Not a whole pile of it. Just a condensed version. And that's why we call it the top three gaming news. Top three. Not the top 22 gaming oh. news. But yeah, here we are in our uh, little studio over here. Which we rearrange and it is much bigger. It is. Uh, we took everything out of the room and then we planned it out from like there. We stood in the empty room and was like, all right. Yeah. Where is this stuff going to go? And the way we have it set up, there's a lot more room. And as you see from uh, the other camera angle, we have uh, some sound foam up, you know, now. So go we us. We actually got it up. It only took us like five months, but we yeah, did it. We did it, everybody. Good job. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. So we got three pieces of gaming news for you. And the number three gaming news comes from uh, Verizon. And Verizon uh, has reported that video game usage has gone up 75% uh, due to the self-quarantines. Now, with the coronavirus, I'm going to say it now, by the way. Uh, anytime I talk about this. I'm going to say coronavirus because we're a small channel, okay? And it's not going to push us, right? But you know what? We're a small channel, and I'm going to take advantage of it while we're still small, and we can say basically whatever we want. Pretty much. Uh, to, a, to a T, anyway. But here's the thing. Uh, because of this uh, epidemic, people are being laid off, uh, and nobody knows what, what the job market's looking like, and they're staying home, and they're scared to go outside. And so they're self-quarantining. And I don't think I need explaining. Uh, ex- wow, go at them. <laughs> um, I don't think I need to do any more explaining because chances are those who are watching this as we go live, uh, you probably are in self-quarantine or you are laid off. Um, they're probably like your boy might be. But here's the thing. There's some, there's some news that comes out of this and that Verizon says that the video game usage has skyrocketed 75%, but Netflix Netflix has gone up only 12%, mm-hmm. 12%, and social media usage has pretty much flatlined, according to Verizon. Uh, so I just want to read this quote. All the articles are linked down below in the description. Whether you're listening on audio or on video, uh, they're all linked in the uh, description down below. And it says this. As we see more and more individuals work from home and students engage in online learning, it is a natural byproduct that we should see an increase in web traffic and access to a VPN. And 
as more entertainment options are canceled in communities across the U.S., an increase in video traffic and online gaming is not surprising, says Kyle Malady, I hope, uh, chief technology officer for Verizon. What do you think about this, Liz? I mean, it makes sense because more people, like we said, they're online, they're doing school online, they're doing work online. Like when it, well, on the days that I'll be working from home, I'll be working online. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it makes it makes sense. This. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. It's not surprising. Even um, Mr. Malady even says that it's not a shocker. That people are are um, going in this. Now we're not going to talk too much about this because we're going to talk about that in our big topic. Yeah. Um, but it's no surprise because, and this is going into my you know Saturday video all about why video games aren't accepted in the mainstream. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. But video games require you to have an active participation mm -hmm. rather than a passive participation. Like uh, videos do or other yeah. entertainment. It's an active participation Why you need a distraction. Yeah. And that's why. And I'm going to talk about this more in our later segment. I think online gaming is as close to human interaction as you're going to get. And I'm going to talk about that yeah. a little bit. But, you know, online yeah. gaming, you're still interacting with people. If you're if you are actually self-quarantining, it's probably it is probably the most human interaction you're going to get outside of your family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool that it's just skyrocketed. I hope you're all going through your backlogs like your boy is, um, except Animal Crossing came out and That's that backlog is just out of the window. I played Animal Crossing till one thirty in the morning last you night. You did. But in my defense. <laughs> in your defense? Yes, in my defense. Yeah. I went to work. I came home. We did laundry. We ate dinner. We watched the movie. I edited a video mm -hmm. until like 11 o'clock at night. I only played for two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. I think I only played for like two and a half hours too. Yeah. So, but it's not so like good. I spent like all day playing until one thirty in the morning. I, I played for two and a half hours. It just happened to be late at night. It's, it's, su it's such a good game. It is. It's already pretty good. I want more residents though, because the other two don't want to talk to me. <laughs> they don't. They like, will say like one sentence, but they won't like interact in a conversation. With They're me. social distancing right now. Apparently. Well, they talk to you. Yeah, that's because I'm a good little boy. Anyways, so that's number three. We're going to talk about more in our big segment. But uh, let's move on to number two of the gaming news. Uh, is that Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 released their specs of, of each system. Uh, we still don't know what the PlayStation 5 looks like, but we know what the specs will look like. And... Uh, a lot of people are disappointed in PlayStation 5. And I think Sony kind of dropped the ball in terms of marketing. Mm -hmm. But what I also think is that I don't think you saw anything from PlayStation 5. I did not. You just told me it wasn't as good as game, as Xbox. In terms of presentation, I said. Um, yeah, but like I wasn't, I didn't watch it. I know nothing about the specs. Yeah, that's the thing. The recent stuff. So there's some. I think that in terms of marketing, I think Sony dropped the ball here because you can definitely tell that the way Sony presented the PlayStation 5 with Mark Cerny, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be the GDC panel. Like Mark Cerny was supposed to come up and talk to game developers mm -hmm. about the PlayStation 5 and not the mass market consumers. They weren't, yeah, they weren't prepared to show it to everyone, but they yeah. realized that they had to because they had no other way of showing it. And the way it was presented... It was it was almost like a college lecture about how technology works, and I'm like, this was supposed to be a GDC. You this can was not meant to convince people to no, buy it. <laughs> it was for sure meant for GDC, and they're just like, eh, people will understand. Eh, it's the mass market people. <laughs> like, yeah, not everybody's gonna understand it. Whereas the Xbox Series X just put out bangers in terms of marketing, mm. but. I think that's going to lead a lot of momentum to Xbox Series X. Now, let me read this quote right here about the specs. And again, articles linked down below. Uh, the, it's the GPU and the SSD sides, uh, the article reads, uh, where PS5 and Xbox Series X really differ. Sony has opted. Now, this is important. Uh, let's make this comparison in terms of the GPU 
uh, power or or even the teraflops. Sony has opted for a custom AMD RDNA uh, two-based GPU inside the PS5, which provides 10.28 teraflops of power with, now here's the important part, 36 computing uh, compute units running at 2.3 gigahertz each. Microsoft picked an AMD, you know, same thing, uh, GPU for the C- Series X, but it can hit 12 teraflops with 52 compute units with 1.825 gigahertz each. Now, that's important. That's very important uh, in terms of the compute frequencies, the computing frequencies here, uh, because a lot of people see uh, 12 teraflops on the Series X and the 10 points something, 10 points, 10.28 uh, for uh, PlayStation 5. But the compute units, again, uh, Xbox is running at 52 compute units, PlayStation 5 at 36. Now, here's the kicker. Uh, Xbox is running at a lower frequency at 1.825 versus the 2.23. That's significant. Now, the reason why I think a lot of people are kind of freaking out over this, not freaking out, but they're like, oh, Xbox is much more powerful. What Xbox is doing is that they're putting out a beefy boy right here yeah uh they're they're gonna call it the xbox beefy boy and that's what it is it's a beefy boy um it's got a lot of compute units it's gonna run a lot of large mapped areas a lot of um uh you know open world rpgs it's gonna run western games very nicely Mm -hmm. however if you look at the frequencies of each compute unit the PlayStation 5 has decided to go for more of a finesse kind of deal. Uh, each compute unit will figure out what kind of game is running, how much compute units it needs, and it's going to figure out how much it should be running its GPU mm-hmm. on each. And when it does, it's going to hit it hard. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be great for a lot of single player games that have a lot of cutscenes. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna pretend to be, um, you know, a tech journalist here or anything like that. I'm not Review Tech USA. Uh, don't get me wrong. Anyways, but I think what everybody's saying is like, look, oh, Xbox Series X is gonna be a lot better. In some ways, yes. But in terms of the finesse of games, mm-hmm. PlayStation Five is gonna like blow it out of the water. Yeah. What do you think? I think I really have no idea what you just said. <laughs> like, I'm just sitting here. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh-huh. And I'm just like, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm just agreeing with you, but I have zero clue what we're talking about. <laughs> Jeez. I, have, I don't understand any of this stuff. Now, if you haven't yet, definitely check out other YouTubers who have said it much better. Um, Kevin Kenson. Kevin Kenson said it a lot better than I can ever uh, talk about it. Uh, but in terms of what it can do, I think Xbox Series X is going to be a beefy boy, but the PlayStation 5 is going to be um, a finesse figure skater. I don't know. What? <laughs> but that's the thing. <laughs> it, they're going to be pretty powerful systems, but running at different clock units. Um, but the fact that Xbox can put out these numbers, again, uh, PlayStation, you're talking to the mass market here. And the mass market, when they see numbers, they're going to go for the much beefier numbers and they're looking at the teraflops does anybody know what teraflops are no i don't think they really know what they are but when they see 12 teraflops and 10.28 guess where they're going the momentum's shifting towards xbox Mm -hmm. series x yeah in terms of marketing strategy yeah i think sony dropped the ball in terms of the marketing and i think that was supposed to be a gdc conference yeah but then they decided like no 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 the mass market will understand yeah. No, they don't. I love you, Mass Market. Please subscribe. I love you. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, how to our top one gaming news. <laughs> the number one gaming thank news. Thank you. The number one gaming news. Thank you, Liz, for, for saving me from myself. <laughs> That's why I married you, because you saved me from myself. That's what I do. Uh, the number one gaming news. It's GameStop, everybody. Yeah. Who wants to go to GameStop? No one. Oh, n- nope. Nobody here. Um, <laughs> GameStop, in the in the limelight of the coronavirus, shutting everything down 
in yeah. America, especially where we live in Pennsylvania, our governor, Tom Wolf. How you doing, Tom Wolf? If you're watching this, what you doing, boy? Anyways, but you're they're so weird. They're shutting down a lot of retailers here. Yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania, New York. At um, this point, it's if you are a non life saving business. Mm -hmm you are shut down like they're allowing yeah. carry away for restaurants but that and grocery stores yeah but those are really the only like brick and mortar places that are supposed to be populated right now yeah and that's the thing is that um but retail was shut down like a week ago yeah and um here's another little fact uh gamestop here's the number one gaming news uh gamestop why are you talking like that uh is Ew. <laughs> <laughs> imagine me just going through a draft like thank you for coming to mcdonald's how can i help you uh. stop it um please keep listening audio listener i love you so much um but gamestop is refusing because they claim that they're an essential retailing business um which is fantastic but such a lie and they're telling store managers to uh confront Com, uh, confront law enforcers and say nope and they're handing them letters now let me read this like quote corporate letters saying like well let me read this quote here okay uh i'm, I'm really trying to work my ums i i promise you i promise you i'm working my He's ums working on them for me because when i edit i edit them out in his saturday videos <sighs> i know it takes me twice as long to edit his ums and I'm sorry, everybody. It's okay. We still love I'm you. A, I'm a creature of hey, a bit. Anyways. Okay. We still love you. Um, so here's the <laughs> quote. According to three sources, uh, again, the articles are linked down below. According to three sources, the company sent out a missive, uh, sent out a missive to retail managers today saying, we believe that GameStop is clarified as an essential retail and therefore is able to remain open at this time. Wait for it. The message from GameStop argues that retailers that the retailer carries goods that enable and enhance our customers to experience in working from home. We save people. Come on now, we're GameStop. We save lives. It's GameStop, everybody. If they're working from home, they're not playing video games. They're working. <laughs> then you haven't met your boy. No, well, kidding. I watch Netflix when I work, but the, most people who are working from home, yeah. like in certain businesses, they're actually physically working. Yeah, I've worked from home a lot of times, like, and I'm just like, I don't have the time to do this, dude. I'm an office manager, so yeah, I watch Netflix when I work from home because I'm just waiting for emails to come in, and I, I call them from my phone when I do when I get them. Wombat streamed Fortnite when he was working from home. Exactly. So it depends on what you do, but most of the people who are working from home... Mm -hmm aren't playing video games yeah. during the work hours. Now, store managers have been ordered to hand a letter to these law enforcers and say that basically it says, if you have any sort of problem with us doing this, you know, call our corporate offices. It's fine. Just call our corporate offices and we'll let you know how we're handling it. And I believe it's from Polygon, but Polygon called them. Yeah, Polygon. Um, I'm wrong. But anyways, uh, but Polygon, you know, called the corporate office and it was just a basic like voice answering machine. And basically, you know, they're, they're leaving them up to dry. And this is how you know how little money GameStop has mm -hmm. because they literally can't even afford to close. Yeah. During a pandemic. Like I still remember when I worked at GameStop. Yeah. And <laughs> remember went during a blizzard, I went during a three foot blizzard. Yeah, it was like the big blizzard in 2015 15. going into, no, it was 2016. It was like the beginning of 2016. Yep. Because it was after I graduated. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I graduated in December. So, yeah, it was like January of 2016. And I walked a mile in three foot snow because GameStop said, we're not closing down. You had like three customers. At the we had thing. three customers. And then GameStop's, um, uh, at the time, uh, the the head honcho guy, he's like, oh, you know, we're losing money by staying open. And I'm yeah, like, a little bit. No one's coming in. Like, they're paying. And that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I feel like people aren't going into GameStop before mm -hmm. all this. Yeah. So why lose the money in, clo in like, staying open during this? Like, I don't know. 
And like they didn't even make the fight like, oh, well, we distract people where you bring joy. We'll help. It, it'll help lower the suicide rate or something. Yeah. They could have gone with that. But then, you know, no, we're saving the lives of people working from home. What? It's silly is what it's, it is. It's it's ridiculous. Like, And the government isn't doing this to punish everyone. They're doing it to help stop spreading it. Mm-hmm. They're trying to just contain it so we can all go back to work. Just making sure Floki's still happy. I don't understand what's so hard about this concept. Guys. Yeah. I don't. Well, that's the thing is that there's rumors going around that if um, GameStop closed during Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal, they would have pretty much been shut down for good. They should have been fu- they should have been shut down for good a long time ago. Yeah. Like they they're like keep like it's like the string breaks and they go Hut. Yeah. And they and they catch it and it's like Hut. It's crazy. It's <laughs> absolute insanity, but it is what it is. GameStop, well it's not is what it is actually. I shouldn't say that, but there's a lot of store workers who are saying like they're we're putting our lives at risk here. Yeah. We're very upset with the management. Or yeah. like, you know, corporate offices because store managers are forcing or yeah, are being they're forced forcing to the store managers to be there too. Like mm-hmm. if it's, I was a manager at GameStop, I'd be like, listen, guys, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Like but, like we we'll just hang out in the store. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not gonna I'm not like I would not be enforcing many rules. Yeah. I'd be like, listen, let's just we'll we'll all sit here for a few hours, we'll talk and have fun. If someone comes in, just let them do their thing. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Yeah, I I don't know what to make of this, but I think GameStop is really putting the workers at at uh at whisk. At whisk. Uh <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just absolute insanity to me. It, it doesn't surprise me because again, I worked at GameStop for two years. Yeah. Uh and I'm not shocked in the least. But here we are in the coronavirus and they're not closing down. It is what it is. Yeah. Kind of sucks, but that's what GameStop does, and that's their mo, and nothing we can really do about it. Yeah, but except you know, there is something we can do about it, and this is the last thing I'll say: vote for, vote with your wallet. But then again, you're you're kind of like screwing over people who work there. But at the same time, you're allowing GameStop to keep doing this. Yeah, like if you don't go and buy anything from GameStop during this time, they're gonna be forced to close because they don't have the money to stay, and they don't have any money coming in. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, if you have the opportunity, if you have a local video game store, you know, support them after all this blows over. If you live in Pennsylvania, I'm going to say it right now. Just press play. It's fantastic. It's the best video game store. they closed too. Well, they did close. Oh, but I'm I thought when, like, all, when all this blows over. When all this yeah. blows over. Uh, I got Animal Crossing from Just Press Play. Just Press Play is the absolute, like, fantastic customer service. I love mm-hmm. them. They're awesome. We go there for all of our video game stuff. I miss and they have movies. Yeah. I missed them so much when we lived in New York and now we're back. Woohoo. Just press play. Like they knew us. When we lived here before, mm-hmm. they knew us. Yeah. They knew us. Like they did. When we left and we came back, they're like, Didn't mm-hmm. you used to come in here a lot? Yeah. And we're like, Yes, we did. <laughs> but yeah, so support your local video game stores if you if you have one. You know, look it up on Google. Mm-hmm. Where's a where's a local video game store? And support your boys. Um, and your gals, uh, y- you know, after all this blows over, yeah. but of course, if they're closed, respect them for that. Yeah. Anyways, I think that does it with top three gaming news. I think so. You know, comment below what you think about all these little pieces of gaming news. All the articles will be linked down in the description down below. Uh, but I think it's time to finally jump into our final segment. Every single week here on the Games Groceries podcast, we like to talk about something in the video game industry, you know, you know, for, for a good little bit, whether it be about female gamers or game preservation. We're here to talk about the gaming industry and just, you know, have a little chat chi chew. What? I don't know. But right now we're in the middle of a crisis, uh, a pandemic, if you will, uh, w- with the coronavirus really spreading mm-hmm. rapidly. There's a lot of distraction that's needed. Yeah. Right now. People are thinking about how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to get a new job? Why is, you know, why is the government shutting down all these stores and now I'm out of work? Mm-hmm. Distraction is kind of needed now. And that's the thing. In the wake 
why do we need distraction, mm -hmm. right? And let's talk about that as we begin our discussion. Why do we need distraction? I think we need distraction, like, just because, like, if you sit there and just obsess over something and, like, speaking mm -hmm. as someone who has anxiety where that's what I do, I think about it, I research it, I talk about it, I think about it, I do more research. Like, it's, it's my whole life until I find something that can distract me. Yeah. Um... I think it's important to distract because then you're just living in it and simmering in it. It's like you mm -hmm. just marinate in this stress. And for me, at least when I do that, even when it's like subconscious anxiety, yeah. I, get, I feel sick. Like my stomach hurts. I get nauseous mm -hmm. and it's just not healthy. Like it's not good for your body to have that level of stress. So to have a distraction, it kind of takes your mind off of it long enough for your, your body to just be like, all right, we're okay. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of like helps your body take a, take a look that couple hours to just calm down before you jump back into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like taking a break between workouts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or taking a day off between workouts, things like that. Yeah. No, it's, that's the thing is that, you know, you, you struggle a lot with anxiety. Uh, and I'll try and say that you don't struggle with depression when I'm saying this. In yeah. the same way that I don't struggle with anxiety. I don't, that's the other thing. I don't really struggle with anxiety the way you do. Yeah. Like, and, and I've been not, what, what was it? I've been diagnosed with a depression disorder, mm -hmm. not anxiety, but it's like my anxiety builds it. It's basically, I just see the negative side almost all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, yeah, so what I have is a depression disorder, but I still have, like, a ton of anxiety with it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, continue. I just wanted to clarify. But in the way of, like, if I'm constantly in my thoughts, mm -hmm. and that's honestly a big reason why I, I focus so much on this podcast, my, my scripting for the video, it's because it takes my mind off of it mm -hmm. for a while. Because if I'm stuck too much in what's going on in the world especially... I get in these dark moods where, mm -hmm. you know, even you try to like get me out of it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I, like I become super violent. I become silent and I'm just in my head. Yeah. And there's some things that go on in my head where I wish it w it would stop. Yeah. You know, and here's another thing I probably should, you know, also make this very clear. We are, you know, Christian and I'll, and I, definitely that's been, you know, uh, part of this podcast mm -hmm. and I'm a devout Christian Liz also. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a devout I'm Christian. I'm an atheist. No, yeah. I'm not. No. I'm, a, I'm not an atheist. It's like two is a couple. I'm the Christian. She's the atheist. How did they get a lot? Oh, no, no, we're both, we're both Christian. <laughs> um, be a great sitcom though. Anyways. Um, it probably was, probably was at one point, but that's the thing. We're both devout Christians and I believe mm -hmm. uh, truly from the bottom of my a uh, soul that, you know, Christ is there for me. God is looking over me. I, I pray every single night, uh, every day to, to have the Lord uh, have his hand over me and protect us in, in this time, you know? And I just want to add, mm -hmm. not to like butt in on top of what you're saying. Yeah. Um, your little sermon. No, I'm um, just, I'm just trying to like, yeah, I was going somewhere. Uh, okay. You can, you can continue. I'll say mine later. Yeah. But I feel bad now. <laughs> But that's the thing is that like I do believe that the Lord will guide us, mm -hmm. and I and I believe that He's always present. That doesn't always mean that you never go through depression because of that. Yeah, and that's the thing is that. And here's the other thing: I might be huh, a little controversial here, but I believe you know God puts out blessings in your life mm -hmm. that can distract you. Uh, you know, there's a verse that people always uh, kind of go go against and they're always uh misinterpreting it where um you know god will never give you more than you can handle mm -hmm. what the verse actually says is that you know you will go through dark times but god will always give you an exit yeah. it's your choice whether to take that exit or not yeah. and i think there's blessings there mm -hmm. that that god provides yeah uh and i believe that god has blessed people with the gift of video game programming and entertainment mm -hmm. Like you, no, uh, but that's the thing is that people have been blessed with this gift and God has gave them their mission 
to at least make them smile in this time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Am I being controversial? Write in the comments down below if you're a Christian and you there hate me. There are probably me. Christians who think it's controversial, but I think it makes sense. Yeah. What were you going to say? Well, it's not, it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense now, but I'll say it anyway. Okay. Um, But like, I was going to say like my little thing of like relationship advice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Couple calls. <laughs> But one thing that I've noticed with us and what um, your mom has noticed with her relationship now mm -hmm. when she compares it to ours. Yeah. Because um, we're goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> um, but what I've noticed is that something that's really good about a relationship and something that I think is good in most relationships, if you have this, like what it feels like when you click is that subconsciously we both know when the other one Mm -hmm. is not in the right place yeah and instantly we become the upbeat one yeah like when i'm depressed you're the one that's like babe it's okay we're gonna be fine everything's fine mm -hmm. but then when you're down i'm like everything's fine like we're fine like and i'm a pessimist for a good portion of the time yeah and but when he's depressed i'm like instantly like oh no everything's fine like i don't know why you're so like everything will work out it's fine like mm -hmm. and i just remind him like god you know if it's meant to be god will make it happen like it'll be fine yeah and the vice versa. And I just always think that's so funny how like it, it's not even like we like force ourselves to do that. It's just, yeah. it just happens to work that way that one's depressed. One's perfectly mm. fine. And, and yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna... Jeez. but that's the thing is I'm that gonna go hide now. No, that was good. That, no, that was a good point though. And that's the thing is that everybody needs that distraction. And I feel like a lot of people misinterpret from Christianity is that once you're a Christian, you're never allowed to be sad, and that's such a lie, and it's yeah. so toxic and poisonous it's like, that yeah. they're misinterpreting scripture. And I'm sorry, but people go through depression, whether they're Christian or not. But distraction, I believe, is God's gift to mankind, and I do believe that people have the spiritual gift of entertainment. And it doesn't have to be like what your boy does. I'm just a silly little clown here for you to be <laughs> smiling at. But it's also even just the gift of programming, the gift of uh, knowing video game design. Yeah. And I believe that entertainment people, right, they're there for people for distraction. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that, like, you know, art is only there for their distracting me. There's beautiful things in movies and video games that you can be in all for and mm -hmm. not needed for distraction. I get that. But right now we're talking about distraction. So get off my back, Karen. Anyways, but that's the thing. <laughs> Is that people go to this entertainment for that bit of mm -hmm. distraction. And I forget I was going for that. But. Distraction. Distraction. I was distracted. But <laughs> that's the thing is that because they, we have this gift, yeah. right? That's why people go to it. Yeah. Like I always say, like you always hear a lot in Christian movies and books, sometimes even like in your own church mm -hmm. that they don't they don't do certain surgeries. They don't mm -hmm. believe in doing certain things because it's too close to playing God. And they think if like God, will, if it's, if it's meant to be cured, God will cure it. Yeah. And my thing of always saying is that, no, I believe that God put people mm -hmm. on this earth to, um, to discover these new theories and new tests and new treatments and things of everything. Just like I, we believe that, God put people in service to make video games, mm -hmm. to make art, to make, to write books. Cause even like, I, I just keep thinking about like the way the black plague and the yeah. Spanish flu, like people need a distraction then too. And they would read and they would still admire art. And, but like they had, they didn't have video games and TV, but they had books Yeah, and they were, a, they found distraction in that. Like, Mm -hmm. And people today still find like their best source of distraction is books, you know? And yeah, that's my thing. I feel like I keep like going and then I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> anymore. <laughs> well, let me uh, bring it back to video games. Yes. Uh, you know, I just need to clarify that because I know a lot of people will probably say, you know, like, oh, we're, you're, you're Christian. You always go to God. Yes. You know, most definitely I'm yeah. in prayer constantly and I'm reading scripture. And I have faith in God in this mm -hmm. time. But at the same time, I'm a person who was abused by my father. And there's a lot of things that goes on by my head that I just need some form of distraction for. Mm -hmm. And going back to video games, 
why I think I'm so attracted to video games in terms of distracting myself is that it requires me to be an active participant yeah. in the medium, right? Yeah. Music, like, it, it gets me, right? I, I really connect a lot with music. But it's usually a background. Yeah. You don't sit there staring at the wall listening to music most days. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I just need to lay on my bed and just yeah. listen to music. However, then I go, you know, then NF gets into my playlist and I'm like, and oh. And then you're depressed again. Yeah. <laughs> I really feel with that NF. That doesn't help. But that's the thing. Video games require me for that yes. active. Yes. And especially when I got a phone call from my employer saying like, listen, you might have to go on unemployment. Yeah. He called me while I was playing Animal Crossing. Yeah. And I think Animal Crossing really helped me, uh, you know, just not think about it right now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I still had to do it. Like, there's responsibilities that I had to do. Mm -hmm. But in that time, like, well, I've got Animal yeah. Crossing. Uh, Tom Nook just hit me with some debt. So I got to really focus on catching mm -hmm. them butterflies. And I don't know what Animal Crossing is a really good distractor for me. Yeah. Because I'm constantly doing some tasks. You have to do something and they're not telling you what to do. So you just have to find things to do. Exactly. Yeah. And I think video games for me, I really connect with and it distracts yeah. me because I'm an active participant in the yeah. world. What do, you, what do you think about all this? I agree. I think that's why a lot of people who play video games already, they find that and like that's where... That'll what that's what will distract them the best when they need to like zone out. Yeah. Um, and I would agree. Um, for me, like I would play Sims or Animal mm. Crossing. I'm not really attracted to the other games when I am yeah. in that state. I just want to do something or watch a show. You, you need your junk food game. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I something that, you just pop in and yeah. just not think or about. Or like it. whatever show I'm binging at the time. Yeah. Like things like that, because I don't I mean, I'm not like as big a gamer as you. Mm -hmm. So it's not always my instant thing. But yeah, if I'm I a, were to play video game, it would be Sims. I am a big hardcore gamer boy. Yes, you are. Dear. But that's why I think this why this podcast works. Just a little side note mm -hmm. is that I've been involved in the video game industry. I, I, I created been Activision. Involved in the game I created game Activision. Industry. I'm taking credit. You've been playing video <laughs> games for a long time. I've been playing video games for a long time. You're pretty new in the video game. I've only so we have two yeah. different perspectives. I've only been playing playing like video games outside of Sims mm. for since we've been married. So for four years. Yeah. Almost. But that, um, I think that's why, you know. But yeah. So I don't instantly turn to video games, which is why I always like bring up my shows and movies. Because I, I always have a show that I'm binging at the time. I'll watch other things. But when I'm doing nothing, I'm usually watching a specific show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what I usually turn to. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where I was going with this. <laughs> you distracted me, and now I have no idea where I was going with this. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to keep talking until I figure it out. What was that Michael Scott quote? Was like, sometimes I start in sense, and I don't know where it's going, and I just hope I find my way Like by the time it ends. I turned on The Office last night, so because like, like, we watch TV when we go to sleep. I turned it on. I was like, oh, we'll watch this when we go to sleep. And I was like, I'm not enjoying this, so I turned on Reba. Yeah. Anyway. So, I don't, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I stayed up till one thirty in the morning <laughs> playing Animal Crossing, and then I ran around crazy all morning. Well, I don't remember what I, where I was going <laughs> with that sentence at all. Well, that's the thing. Um, I think video games I connect a lot with because I don't have to think about it, and so mm -hmm. it's a comfort food. But you know, there are people who are blessed with that gift, and it just it, it's a good remedy almost. Yeah. No, to I, go to it, you know, I agree. I think that I don't the, think it should. I think the perk of video games is that it is active. Like you have to participate. It's not like a show. Like I remember I went through a really depressive state my first semester without you at college. Mm -hmm. And um, I would be like, that was when I was still catching up on Grey's Anatomy. Like I hadn't been actively watching. I was catching up. So I was like binging Grey's Anatomy and I was just laying there and I was like, I'm not even enjoying this. Yeah. Like, and I think if I had had video games at that time, it it might have been something because it would have gotten me doing something instead of just laying there staring at a screen. Exactly. You know? Now, I'm just making sure that we don't have any um, uh, any other new comments, but I kind of want to get into uh, we asked you on, on social media, uh, how have video games helped to distract you? Right. 
And we have a couple uh, good, you know, good little boys and girls here. <laughs> I don't know why I said uh, we have good, <laughs> good, good comments, group of people, good group of people. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's read some of these comments and just talk from there. What Ooh, are we doing? Boy. So let's read one comment and then we'll come back to it. Uh, so the greatest story ever played podcast has this to say. Uh, when I asked, no, how have video games helped distract you? Uh, Dan says this. One thing I've been enjoying is being able to get lost in a game, quote unquote, get lost mm-hmm. in the game. I've been playing Jedi Fallen Order this week and just getting to be uh, and just getting to be in the Star Wars universe has been really nice. And that's what he's talking about is that, mm-hmm. you know, you just get lost in this universe. Yeah. And I love that, especially Jedi Fallen Order. There's a lot of lore that mm-hmm. you find out about it. And you go, you're weird. Anyways, what do you think about that quote? Or no. No, that um, comment? I um, I think that's nice because like with all this going on, you can distract yourself and just be in a world that you're so familiar with. Mm-hmm. Like a Star Wars, you grow up with it, you watch it, you're, you're part of that universe. And when you're playing the game... You're actively in it. And during this time, it's nice to be transported into something that's still familiar. Yeah. You know? No, that's the thing is that especially when it's something familiar and you're Mm -hmm. and you've spent a lot of time in uh, for me, especially with Animal Crossing. I've spent a lot of time in that universe, mostly on the GameCube. Mm -hmm. But I know the game and I don't have to think about it. And it's familiar to me. I feel that would be like me, like when we, when I thought like, oh, if we were quarantined or we were, ha- mm-hmm. we were like in shelter in place, I'd be like, we could binge, we like we could marathon Harry Potter. Yeah. Like that. That's it's because it's something familiar. It, it's something that I find comfort in. Cause yeah. I'm so familiar with it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, Dan, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Getting lost in the game, especially yeah. is, I, I think it, it's the most important thing about being distracted in terms of a conversation it's about it. That you can get that deep into. Yeah. Now, something else I want to talk about is online gaming. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the Verizon uh, quote, it mm-hmm. also said that online gaming has been up dramatically, right? And I think that makes a lot of sense because I talked about that, how that has a lot of human interaction yeah. that's just, you know, part of it. Yeah. And I also want to make, a, I want to make a video on this, but I want to make sure that we have the right settings. We practice enough of how these videos are done. And I kind of want a little bit more of an audience. I wanted to be seen because, you know, I have this idea of when I was in between churches, when I was in between one church and another church, uh, church jobs, and I was working a security job, I was probably in my worst state possible. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't think I've ever been that low before. And how division kind of saved me in that state because I could jump in with my buddy Frank and we just played division. Like mm-hmm. my day looked like I would wake up, I would do my exercises, I would apply to 20 jobs, and then I would get on um, get on division with Frank, and then I wouldn't have to think about anything until I had to go to my security job at night. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. With online gaming, you can actually have human interactions with people, yeah. and it distracts you because you're yeah. there in a world with your buddies. Yeah. What do you think about that? And I think... The other thing to think about is like the people who live alone, Mm -hmm. like the young adults who live alone or in an apartment or something. Online gaming is beneficial because then you're not in complete isolation. Like I can't imagine being stuck in my house during this time by myself. Yeah. Like being by myself is the most dangerous thing to be alone with my thoughts. Like especially if you live alone and you have an anxiety disorder. Please get online. Please get on your phone. Do mm-hmm. something because you should not be 1000% alone. That's not good. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think online gaming is good because not only are you immersing yourself in another world that's not as horrible or you, you're you in control of what's going wrong mm-hmm. and you're talking and being with a friend at the same time. Like it, do, it won't feel as alone. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I definitely felt not so alone because I felt like he was there with me Mm -hmm. and we were laughing and there was a lot of funny memories with that. Yeah. And I just remember not being in my own headspace. Yeah. But I just remember being there with, with my buddy. Yeah. And we were just, you know, shooting up bullet sponges basically because it's the division, the very first division, by the way. Uh, Yeah. And, and I just, and I just love that. And I wasn't in so much isolation and I didn't have to see people 
it was in my comfort zone, but mm-hmm. I was still interacting with human beings. Yeah, and I, I think was that, at work, by the way. Yeah, no, she's mm-hmm. at work, and then she would come home, and we would eat dinner. We would see each other for an hour. Then I have to leave at nighttime to go to my security job, and that was just you know I was a yeah. wreck, you know. Yeah. But that's it. I I think that online gaming really helps people in this time too because. Mm-hmm just jump online with a good friend and you're doing a mission and you're you're like what dan says you're getting lost in this world mm-hmm. that you're both familiar with and you can have that fun time in the universe instead of being stuck in your apartment or your home and you know no one's around you video games really help you distract that in that kind of mm-hmm. way now i want to get through not get through i shouldn't say that uh, i just want to get through these things <laughs> now i want to also read these other two comments uh Liz, do you want to read um this one right here. Sure. Mm-hmm. So at Andrew Orsi says, mm-hmm. they definitely take me out of it and help me pass time, but I'm actually less able to get engrossed in the game right now mm-hmm. than usual. Possibly the anxieties about income since I'm unemployed, plus the general confusion permeate. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Permeates. Oh, Woohoo. Mm-hmm into my mind too deeply to push aside right now which i understand that's what i was saying when i was in college watching Grey's anatomy like usually that was fine but i got to such a far point yeah that it didn't matter anymore and i understood that because usually um when i had anxieties when i was younger when i would go to work yeah i knew a lot of people who like they couldn't go to work because they were so anxious and so depressed but i was like i go to work and it i don't think about it yeah but this past week or so Every time news comes out, I'm just like, I'm like just frozen in time. Like, I have to answer this phone, mm-hmm. but I just want to sit here and think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I completely understand what he's saying right there. Yeah. And I, and I get that too. There was, there's just some times where, especially right now. Yeah. There's like such there's a... new news coming out every second. Yeah. You just want to sit on Facebook and s- marinate in the bad news. Yeah. Like there's a lot of jobs being lost. Not a lot of information being put out there. Uh, apparently, the virus is mutating as we speak of it. And there, there's just too many things to really get engrossed and uh, really get getting lost in the world of video games. I, th- I still think we need distraction. But at the same time, there's, there's, there's definitely times where you're just thinking about it and you're just like, I don't know what to do right now. And I can't even play video games right now because I'm just so distracted of what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. And I get that. You know, especially when he says, but I'm getting less able to get engrossed in the game right now than usual. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's set, especially since I'm unemployed, plus the general confusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. There's just, there's just too much around. But I still think video games and entertainment alike, they can definitely help mm-hmm. us uh, get distracted uh, while we still do our responsibilities. Yeah. And again, I'm not trying to push this, push this message of like, always be distracted. Take your happy pills, everybody, because we're all... I'm not trying to be like, we happy few. Yeah. You know, if you haven't played we happy few, uh, for one, it's okay. Uh, but the other part, by the way, episode 10, we talked about we happy few. Uh, oh, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. But anyways, uh, yeah, and that's the thing is that, you know we don't always need to be distracted because there are responsibilities in our life that we need to be get, you know, get done. But at the same time, there are times where if you're too engrossed in this, if you're too, um, you know, like what he says, general confusion permeates in my mind. You start to like really think about how is this all going to like end up? Mm -hmm. Oh, camera one is off. But we still got camera two. Hi, camera two. If you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, so then I want to read uh, while she's getting that back on Nikki's tweet. I commend her. Nikki says they definitely help. Uh, they definitely help not think about this thing. <laughs> yeah, I told um, I told the last uh, video that I'm not going to say the virus. But, I, you know, I started to figure, you know what? I'm a small YouTuber and nobody cares about me. So I'm going to say it. Uh, help not to think about the thing for a while. Just yesterday, I was somewhat delighted uh, to read about a homicide. Finally, news uh, talk about something else different. Oh, my goodness, Nikki. Um, I feel that. I do kind of feel that. Um, video games have always helped me get through rough patches, and they will do now and continue to. Uh, also, most important, I think video games and entertainment in general, books, shows, 
uh, movies, music, podcasts like Ya Boys uh, will... You know there's two of us on the show, right? Ya Boy uh, will actually help people stay indoors. Yes, Thank Nikki. you. Preach. <laughs> and additionally, I can only repeat what I've uh, read many times already. Remember that in the time of this crisis, you turn to artists, so pay them accordingly. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. That was not planned, I that swear. That was See, we are relationship goals. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Listen, but, I've been told enough times I can say it. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the thing is that um, Nikki's right here. Mm-hmm. And, and in terms of what, what one thing, if you enjoy your artist, pay them accordingly. Yes, please. Uh, right now, we do not have a Patreon account. No. What you can do if you do uh, like the show. Like us. <laughs> like us. You know, like the video. Share it with a friend. Tell them about games and groceries. That's all you have to do. Uh, you know, just tell Spread people. Spread the news. Spread the news. But in terms of paying them accordingly, you know, you know, Don't. throw them a buck or two. Yeah. That's it. But in terms of, you know, there's a lot going on here that every single news piece, including video game news, is about the thing, the coronavirus. I'm going to say. <laughs> but... Don't tell YouTube, everybody. Let them push me. Anyways. Oh, geez. Uh, but that's the thing is that in this time, we need this kind of distraction. And and if we don't, we're just going to be sucked into it. We're not going to know what to do. We're going to go in mm-hmm. panic mode. And I think that's where entertainment, especially video games, where they require you for an active participation yeah. in the medium. I think that's why it's important. So important in this time because mm-hmm. it forces you to be an active participant like even i was thinking the other night i was trying to edit a video i needed to get cuts done Mm -hmm. and we had just gotten like i had just checked facebook real quick while something was loading Mm -hmm. and i saw that the governor had shut down like was saying like we're enforcing it now that you can't like places can't be open yeah and i got so distracted I was texting my mom. I was texting his mom. Like I couldn't make a cut without getting a text. And I was like, I'm putting my phone on silent. I had to put it on silent and focus on the video to not, to stop being so distracted by all this going on. So even like editing, like, yeah, I had to put my phone on silent to stop me being distracted. But once I got into the video, that's what I was doing. And I was okay. But until up until I put my phone on silent, I was telling him like, I'm so distracted. I don't even want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be editing right now. I know I have to, but like, I was just, I was so distracted by just talking about it. Mm -hmm. No, that's just it. Is that, I I, I definitely think we need this distraction. I think, where is he? Oh, hi. Hi, baby. I think we can um, start to wrap up the conversation because he misses us. He does. So, um, just a side note about why the dog misses us. Um, One, (laughs) Adam's been at work, but also, before we started, or we had started and we restarted, but before when we started, the dog had gotten out of his chair and he knocked the light over, and so he was so he was scared to go back in his chair. He's been sitting on the floor next to Adam because his daddy's his protector, mm-hmm. um, so he was scared to sit in his chair this whole time. So that's yeah, why yeah. the dog needs us. So we're we're going to start to wrap up the conversation, <laughs> but uh, you know, just want to put that out there that you know. I think there's definitely some some things in our life that need to be, you know, set forth. Like if you have to apply for unemployment, you know, get that done. But at the same time, if you're always stuck and mm-hmm. thinking about and always watching the news, you're going to be in panic mode. Yeah. You're not going to know what to do. And video games have reached out to us before and just say, listen, it's a distraction, right? Mm-hmm. Uh and that's the thing. As a Christian, I understand that you know God is always there for me. It doesn't mean that I don't need. It doesn't mean we don't worry about it. Exactly. It doesn't mean we we don't need a distraction. That's just it, though. So, I think my message in in terms of all of this is that you know get things done. Make sure you're safe. Make sure that you have your priorities in check. But at the same time, a distraction should be a priority. Mm-hmm. If you're always thinking about what could go wrong now, you're going to go in panic mode and you're going to do something. You're going to do something stupid. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that right now. So take a little break. You know, if you are unemployed, you know, take some time to do your distractions. It doesn't have to be video games. It could be Netflix. 
It, mm-hmm. it could be social media. It could be, you know, watching a games and groceries video. You know, definitely check those out too. But that's the thing is that do what distracts you the most. Take a little time for yourself so that you're not in full panic mode. Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts? Uh, nope. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Like, I just, I I mean, I think I've said my piece on it. Like, I think distractions are good in times like these. Like, it's good to have the distractions. Like, if we had kids, we'd be having movie marathons. Like, I'd have theme days and Mm -hmm. we'd be having fun. So. Play with pens. No. I have pens here. Oh, joy. So, we can wrap up this conversation. (laughs) Uh, So, with all that said, um, like I said, Take some time for yourself. Yeah. Watch Self, a movie marathon. Self-care. Yeah. Uh, and share with us on social media. How are you distracting yourself? Mm-hmm. Uh, what what kind of games are you playing? What movies are you watching? Uh, you know, show us a picture of your dog. Yeah. Send us pictures of your dogs. Or your cats if you want to. But we prefer dogs. Don't send us pictures of lizards. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. Send us pictures of lizards. No. Do it. No reptiles. No amphibians. Uh, specifically tag at Journey First. No. <laughs> So, again, we want to thank you for listening to this week's podcast. If you haven't already and you enjoyed the episode, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe. Uh, <laughs> wow. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you. You're hit welcome. that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so that you know when all these podcasts come out, as well as the video that's coming out this Saturday. And if you really liked it, definitely hit that like button. Share it with a friend so that everybody knows about games and groceries. You know, push us in the algorithm. Do it. Help us out. But... And if you haven't and you're listening to us on the audio version, you'll see in the description a pod chaser link. Click that link. Leave us an honest review so that, you know, we know how we're doing. And so that pod chaser knows like, hey, this is a popular show. So definitely uh, check that out. And if you haven't yet, uh, follow us on social media mm-hmm. at Gaming Groceries. I'm at Ace the Grocer. I'm at Journey First. Follow us on Instagram, Games and Groceries, all one word. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Check out our website, gamesgroceries.com. And I think that's all I need to say. I think so. So we will see you in the next episode. Uh, episode 100 is coming soon. And we're going to be <laughs> accepting <laughs> questions pretty soon. Uh, episode 100 indeed will be an Ask Us Anything. I'm so excited. So, so excited n- to talk about myself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Next week, we're going to be taking submissions for questions, so definitely get hyped for that. But until then, everybody stay safe, stay indoors, social distance, and uh, stuff. Stuff. Play more video games. Do it. Bring that number up to 90%, not just 75%. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a safe week. We love you all. That's sincere. I love you. If you're watching this, if you're not, I still love you. See you in the next episode. Bye.